It's the NFL on EA Sports, and tonight's clash of conferences is just moments away. It's the Dolphins and the 49ers coming up next. We're about 40 miles south of Candlestick Point as we welcome you inside Levi Stadium in Santa Clara. The scene a short time ago, this crowd, they love their 49ers, and they were in full roar as their guys burst out of the locker room. And we're ready for football as the 49ers get set to do battle with the Miami Dolphins. Brandon Gordon and Charles Davis on hand. And Charles, our ball game here featuring a couple of young quarterbacks a lot of people have their eye on. Yeah, Brandon, we're starting to see some of the old guard moving on. Guys like Drew Brees, Phillip Rivers, Eli Manning. And in their place, there have been some dynamic young guys who have come into the league, not just this year, but in the last three or four years in particular. They've really changed the quarterback position. I think both of these guys fit into that category. Youth is being served. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This will be fielded inside the five. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. So here's the first drive now for the 49ers. And they'll be let out by the man running the show, Charles, their quarterback. It's pretty much become the norm when we see guys come out before a game and go through the route tree with their receivers. I thought it was exciting for us to see the exact same thing happen in practice. He's, not, so, he's so meticulous, isn't he? He really is, and it's not. that tells me it's not just a one-time-a-week thing. They work on it all the time, trying to hone that fine edge. They want to see if they can get in sync and stay in sync in this one. On first down, Montana drops it underneath to go. And they're able to get this one across the 35. I like it, I like it, I like it. Get everyone involved in the passing game, and you know you can create those great mismatches throwing it to your guys out of the backfield. And on the first drive, that can also help establish some rhythm, right? I think so. It gets everyone involved. They feel like they're part of it. It really gets them amped up as they go forward. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Now the first carry here for Frank Gore. And he's going to be stopped up quickly here. Just a yard up to the 39. No doubt about it. A really nice job there by the defense, not allowing him to get to the perimeter. But that means your defensive ends, your outside linebackers, the guys that you pay big money to to sack the quarterback, they also have to have interest in the running game as well. And they did a nice job there of holding the point of attack and not giving ground. Now a man open down the middle of the field. I think defensively you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on. And I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that and you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch, now you put the offense in a position where every series they have to work hard to pick up first downs and intend to score them out when you do that. That throw's not going to get them a whole lot, but that really didn't matter, did it? They got what they needed on that throw. Picked up the first down and 
I'm going cliche here. Game of inches, partner. Absolutely. Well, and you talked to me a lot about opening drives, how key those are to set the tone. You kept the drive alive. Third down conversion here is big. Two first downs have them up near midfield now on first and ten. Here's Gore now running out of the gun. And he's across midfield and into Miami territory. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. I feel like I could see what he was thinking on that carry. Wanted to follow that big tackle through the hole. Ended up only getting four yards on the carry. I think he had designs on that one being bigger. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. Play action. It's Montana. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Well, they've got man coverage on the outside, and my scouting report on these DBs tells me that they love to take matters in their own hands. They want man coverage, not zone. And there was good coverage there that forced the incompletion. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. Here's Montana to throw. And a dangerous throw there as that's knocked down and incomplete. But when you're going up against a talented receiver like that, you just know that they're going to bring more people to him, right? They're going to double cover him every chance they get. I think that that is what we're going to see all game long, an early taste of that double, maybe even sometimes triple coverage we might see. Yeah, I think what they're counting on, his talent to sometimes beat that double coverage. Wisnowski on to punt as he sends this one away. And the punt over the side in the air, and the spot will be inside the 35. So here come the Dolphins now as they get set to take over on offense. And here's a look at their leader, standing 6-4. And what's a quarterback's best friend? Balance? I think you're right. <laughs> I agree with you. You know, a lot of guys would say great receiver, right? A terrific offensive line. But I agree with you. Balance. Because if you can run the ball effectively, that just opens things up for guys who want to throw it and gives you easier passing lanes and easier coverages to read. And they said balance will be a focus in this one. Yeah, they don't want it all just heaped on his shoulders, I don't believe. I think they want to make sure they take some of the pressure off. He'll be tackled shy in the 35. Pretty shifty footwork, but didn't buy him much. Now a look at Smith. Not sure exactly what happened, but he's still down. While the training staff works on him, we'll step aside and be right back. Second and eight. Now they'll toss it out right to Williams. And he'll lose yardage. Brought down at the 32. The tally there, minus two yards. Brings up third down. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football. But that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result. Negative yardage. down to Williams and he's going to be taken down at the 39 clearly short of the first by a few yards now after the completion we're going to get a timeout an injured player well he gets attended to we'll step aside So on fourth down, the Dolphins' new punter for 2021, Michael Pilardi, on to punt. As he's on to punt for the first time tonight. Called 
had a 45-yard punt, just two yards there on the return. And the Niners will go on offense first and 10. Back out there comes the 49ers offense ready for their second drive. They punted last time they had it. What steps, Charles, do you think they have to take to make sure they don't do that again? Well, let's just go to the football 101, the trite expression 101. Win first down. Make five, six, seven yards on first down and make it a second and three, second and manageable. Keep accumulating first downs that way. Keep moving the football. You don't want to get behind the sticks because then the defense has the advantage. First and 10 for Montana and company. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. From the snap, he certainly looked like he knew where he wanted to go with the ball, but surprise, that guy was covered. So that took his attention elsewhere to no avail. Second and 10. Shotgun, here's Montana. This one into the hands of Kittle, the tight end. They'll get only three there, so it leaves them with a third and seven ahead. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. So now at third and seven, and defensively, it's a dime look. Six DBs. Montana. He finds his man complete. It's Owens. And he is going to have a Niners first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Well, I think when they look at their offense, they think to themselves, weapons, weapons everywhere. And they want to move the ball around. They want to spread it to different people. But you absolutely know they want to get this man involved as well. And that's what they just did on that play. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. And the hole closes quickly. He gets it across the 35 to the 36-yard line. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Give credit to the defense for stringing that play out. And they gave up no cutback angle. You know he was trying to dart through. No place for him to go. A nice job there, only giving up a three-yard gain. Back to the ground, this time with Gore. And he'll take this one for about four up to the 40. When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're gonna go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it, thank you. The heavy set out there, three tight ends in the formation for third and three. They'll try and pick up the first with Gore. Gore hit. He lost the football. And this is picked up by the Dolphins. And his guys are going to take over at their own 48-yard line. He was trying to do anything he could to get that final little bit for the first down. Instead, he lost the ball. Yeah, and he was short of the first down, but not by much. Trying his best, as you noted, to get there. Sometimes that extra effort can cost you. So Miami coming out for their second drive. And the first drive, three and out. Second possession, let's see if they can get a little momentum. And oftentimes that first drive is just a feeling out process. You have some plays that you've got called and you want to see how... And now before the ball changes hands, they're going to take a look at this just to make sure that they have it right. Now the question, was the knee in fact down before this ball comes loose? And is the video convincing enough to overturn it? A lot of factors here. Remember, you also need clear possession of the football afterwards. This is a tough one to overturn. So that challenge, a successful one. So good starting field position for him here as they come up first and 10, right at the 50-yard line. Now a handoff for Gore, and he sneaks his way forward only for a couple here, second down. Well, any lane that might have been open there was closed pretty quickly, and that was because the defensive front 
they won that battle at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. They used great leverage, held their spot, and stacked him up. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. They will look to throw. Montana, the tight end Kittle has it on the left side. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger gain. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. On first down, it's score. And he sneaks his way forward only for a couple here, second down. When we talk about defenders, specifically linebackers, keeping their eyes in the right spot. He had that eye down the entire time. And you know that's not easily done because they throw a lot of misdirection at you. They try and fool you and get your eyes in the wrong place. But you're right about that one. He correctly figured that one out and made a really nice play. Throwing on second and eight, Montana. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on, third down. Well, it certainly appears that they're gonna try and keep getting him the football. That's the third time they've looked in his direction. Unfortunately, haven't completed one yet, but I'm not sure they're going to shy away from him. They feel like they've got something there and they want to capitalize on it. I think it. you're right. We're only in the first quarter, so a lot of opportunities ahead. To throw is Montana. And this is going to be incomplete. Has to be a little bit of frustration there. Back-to-back -back incompletions. Receivers blanketed on both attempts, this time on third down. The 49ers are going to turn over to the special teams crew. The field goal unit is out there now. This from 54 yards away. And this won't get there, won't be online either. It's no good, off to the right, and this will remain a scoreless game. Charles, 54 yards, I'm surprised that came up short. I would agree with that one because normally, if he misses, it's accuracy, not length, because he has plenty of leg for that. But maybe it's like I hit my golf shot, you know? Maybe it's like <laughs> my wedge, you know, when you chili dip and you hit the ground ahead of it, sometimes that'll shorten your distance as well. So after the missed long field goal attempt, this offense set up nicely at the 44-yard line. First down, Marino. They'll get this to his running back, Edmonds. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. They'll contain him to just four, second down. They'll run out of the gun here, Williams. And he'll be brought down right at midfield after a gain of only a couple. We haven't seen much from him running the football here in this first quarter. No, you're right about that. We haven't seen much of him at all so far. They've stacked him up pretty well, but when you're trying to run the football, sometimes you gotta play the long game. Keep handing it to him, and some of those runs that aren't working now, they turn into six, seven, eight, and maybe more later on. From midfield now, Marino. Throwing left side here, and it's complete. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. Let's go! I don't care how many times we say it, I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass tree in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. They'll throw on first down with Marino. Going right side here, and that's complete. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. I like that one, partner. They go back-to-back -back with excellent gains 
and really it shouldn't be a surprise who they were throwing the ball to. He's their best guy. Yeah, we knew that they would get him involved early. They're doubling down on getting him involved early. Don't be surprised if they'll come right back to him again. They haven't shown the propensity to be able to stop him. And he's got it. Touchdown. A 12-yard touchdown grab. And the Dolphins are going to take a first quarter lead. Brandon, what we just saw there were two guys who were in sync. The person delivering the ball, but especially the person running the route. Tremendous job. It results in a terrific play. A try here for the extra point. And that makes it 7 nothing Dolphins. The drive summary that time, five plays. And it ends with a touchdown for the Dolphins. After the TD, here's Carpenter on to kick it away. Fielded just outside the goal line. And he'll be brought down right on the chalk of the 20. We're going to work. San Francisco set to go on offense once more. And they were in field goal range last time out but couldn't connect. And it's early in the game, so I don't think that the confidence just goes entirely out of, you know, running your kicker back out there. But let's face it, some coaches have a little bit less patience for that than others. Let's see if they call the game differently now in terms of what they do on drives and not try and settle for field goals. Joe Montana here going to the air on first down. Completes it to the tight end, Kittle. And he stopped right at the 25 after a gain of five. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Here's a second and five now from the 25. On oh, the handoff, it's Gore. And he's upended after a gain of two out to the 27. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. And now some motion before the snap. And this will be our first penalty of the night's proceedings. That was a third and somewhat manageable, now not so manageable. Exactly, because you had a play call on that you felt like, hey, this could go quick, and it doesn't take much to get it done. Now, you got to start thinking about a little bit of a deeper route type of a call, especially if you want to throw it. Now, after the false start, they need eight yards here on third down. Now, Montana. Yeah, this pass broken up. Excellent coverage there on third down as that was not an easy one to hold on to. From a defensive perspective, they had exactly what you want anytime they want to throw the football. There was pressure on the quarterback. They were getting after him, and they tightened down on the receivers and forced the incompletion. Here comes the 49ers punter now as he'll punt it away for the second time. And bulldozing his way through. 43 yards on the punt, seven yard return, and it'll be Dolphin football. Out comes the Miami offensive unit now. They get set to take over. They've got a seven nothing lead in the football as well as they start out first and 10. Right 
Moreno here from the gun. On the right side open is Gasicki. A gain of six there on first. Brandon, perfect defense in this situation would have meant that there was an incompletion that would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync, stayed in great communication. And as he dragged across each zone, you see him pointing and communicating. There he is, and they passed him off to each defender. Ended up making a nice play, even though it was complete. And tackled down after a gain of three. Leaves him with one yard to go on third down. He was hoping to get to the edge, but they did a really nice job of forcing him back inside. That's excellent fundamental defensive football. Don't let them outside where they can really shred your defense. They'll try and run for it. Here's Williams. And yeah, Williams is going to be stopped short of the yellow line. He did not get there. No gain there on the play, and that's going to leave him with a fourth down. Yes, it's the first half, but we'll see if that stuff there on third and one comes back to haunt him. I hope you don't mind, but it's not going to stop me from putting a check mark next to this play. Let's look back as this game progresses and see if this is one of the key plays in the game, even though it occurred early. Here's Michael Pilardi now as he'll kick it away for the second time. And he'll get off a fairly short kick here as this is toward the sideline. And this one will not be returnable as it sails out of bounds. The 49ers offense now, they get set to head back on the field. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. Looking for Crabtree, and it's intercepted. Picked off here, the 32. And he will bring it back. It's a pick six and a Dolphins touchdown. And this defense looking like they have come to play the pick six, and just like that, it's 13-0 early on. Well, go back with me to our training camp visits. What do we hear during these drills? Oh, pass. pass. Ball. Ball's in the air. And then my favorite. Oski. That's the interception. <laughs> that means everybody finds someone to block. Block them legally. Stay on your feet. And they get it done. Touchdown. Extra point attempt here still to come. And it's good, and they have jumped out here to a quick 14-0 first quarter lead. So the defense creating some points, not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And he will make it to the 20-yard line and no further. The 49er offense set to get this drive underway. They've been outplayed early, no question. Down 14-0 already as they come up first and 10. Fights forward for only about a yard up to the 21. Fourteen nothing the score. This is the NFL on EA Sports. 
The 49ers with the football here to begin the second quarter as they're looking at a second down and nine to go. Back to throw here. A right side catch by Crabtree. And he'll be corralled right around the 34. When you struggle on offense, you're looking for anything possible to get you going. Sometimes you do it like basketball teams that don't normally press. You put a press on, bring people to life, make them move a little bit quicker. Maybe that'll help them as they head towards the half. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. The run right side, it's Gore. And he went nowhere. Well, he went backwards, yeah, back baby. to the 33. Yeah, Two yards the loss, second and 12. Well, it's almost football 101 that you preach to your safeties. Don't let anyone get behind you. You're the last line of defense. But he didn't let the play come to him. He went to the play. How about that read and recognition and finishing off that one behind the line of scrimmage? Second and 12. Operating out of the gun. Here's Montana. That'll be caught by Rice. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. And this was a nice example of an offensive coordinator scheming his guy open. Just a little underneath route, just trying to free up some space. And it worked awfully well. Got him not just space, but plenty of room to run after the catch to pick up really nice yardage. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. Here's Gore. He takes it down to the 42, a five yard run. Brandon, five yards on that run. Let's get back to the huddle and make sure if you're back, you spend time with your offensive line and give them credit. Hard to move those 300 plus pounders at the line of scrimmage, and they did for a significant chunk of yardage. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. And here's carry number 10 for Frank Gore. They'll fight forward for a couple down inside the 40. It's interesting going into this game, there was so much talk from both sides about who would control the line of scrimmage. I think we've seen who has it in this one so far. Well, they bottled him up. He's barely averaging over three yards a carry right now. The Niners on third down, two for five to this point. Here it's third and two. Back to throw. Connects with Kittle underneath. And he's going to have the first down yardage to the 35. Let's go, as an unbiased observer, I think it would have been interesting to see what they would have done if they hadn't gotten the first down there. But since they did, I guess the point is moot. Yeah, they were right there in that middle ground, field goal range, punt, go for it. But as you said, they picked it up. They'll run on first down. Craig, and he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground, but I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. Play fake, now here's Montana. Over the middle complete, it's Rice. And he's got another first down as he's brought down at the Dolphins 16. I tell you what, it looks like he's shaking off that pick six just fine. It's not just defensive backs that have to have short memories. Quarterbacks utilize that as well. A much more confident throw right there. Oh. 49ers with their first trip to the red zone thus far. They come up first and 10 at the 16. They run, it's Gore. And he's brought down just outside of the 10 at the 11. 
And credit the tackle to Brandon Jones. Hey, when you get good yardage like that on first down, it really does a whole lot of good for your entire offense. But I love the way he's finishing those runs. At the end of things, he's making sure he gets just a little bit extra. After the pickup of five, here's second and five. Now it's Gore. And this carry not as productive. He swallowed up at the line of scrimmage. They'll say no gain on the play there, and now it'll be third down. And he got off the end there very quickly to make that play. Yeah, it was almost like the bullet train, wasn't it? I mean, just zoom. Quick, quick, quick. And what a terrific play, holding them to no gain. Out of the gun now on third down. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. And down inside the 10 here before he's out of bounds right around the 7. Short completion, just four yards, and it'll be fourth down. So much about offense is what you call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it, and then they can make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after catch. They did a really nice job there of limiting that and keeping them from a first down. Yeah, stopped him in his tracks. Montana going for it on fourth, and it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. The Niners go for it, but it doesn't work out. And the Dolphins' defense is able to hold. A chance to get some momentum here in the second quarter, getting their first trip into the red zone, but unable to get it across. And if I'm the head coach, sure, you feel some disappointment, maybe a little bit of deflation there because you didn't get it in, but I'm going straight to rah-rah mode. All right, guys, we didn't get it this time. That's only the second quarter. We'll be back. Let's get it later on. I want to keep this team up. I don't want them to feel like they've let everyone down. Positive. Got to be positive in this situation. It's too early to think that you don't have a chance to win this game. They start the drive on the ground. It's Williams. Williams is going to have the first down and a little more as he'll take this up to the 22-yard line. Let's get him. Come on. That's a nice run right there, able to get to the outside. And so many times, defenses say, OK, we've got you hemmed in. But if you're running the football, at least you know where everyone is coming from. You don't have to worry about the backside at all. That allows you to run with a little bit more confidence as you traverse down the field. Now they can breathe a little easier, some room to operate, as they've got it first and 10 now out past the 20. Now Williams. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Yeah, I don't know if it's exactly a win-win, but if you're on offense, you'll take that kind of a run, all right? It was kind of stacked up, found a little bit of yardage, and frankly, they're pretty close to staying on schedule on offense. The playbook is still open for the coordinator. From the 25 on second down, Marino. That's complete to his tight end, Mike Gesicki. He'll be dropped after a gain of about six across the 30 to the 31. Let's not quibble about the gain there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take what you can get situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives a much better opportunity to convert on third down. The Dolphins on third down, just one for three thus far. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. And he'll have a Dolphins first down as he'll get this up to about the 42. Come on now, let's go! That's quite a spot there for his first carry of the game, but obviously they had plenty of faith in him, didn't they? No question about it here. Why not go with the fresh legs? Able to push forward, pick up that first. So two first downs, and that moves the ball to the 42 now, first and 10. Out of the gun, it's Marino. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Marshall. Seven yards, the pick up there. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. On second down, Williams. And he'll get it down here to the 43. Let's go, baby. 
He's a little boy with me, baby. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember the last drive, they went three and out. So from inside Niner territory now, this is first and 10 at the 43. Marino sets up. And that'll be knocked away. It's incomplete. As a defensive back, you have some weapons at your disposal that we don't often talk about. And you can read the receiver's eyes, you can read his hands, and you know that the arrival of the ball is imminent. And that allows you to make a play on it and oftentimes knock it away. Here's second and 10. To throw is Marino. He finds his man complete. That's Clayton. They get six. That'll leave him with third and four. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. This will be the eighth play of the drive here. Third and four. Now it's Marino. Try to get it to Williams, but it's intercepted. Picked off at the 30. Oh, he's got some breathing room. And into the end zone, a pick six for the 49er D as they score the touchdown. Well, dare I say it, it's kind of quid pro quo. Both defenses now with an interception return for a touchdown. Your vocabulary, sir. Well done. Eddie Pinheiro now for the extra point. And that one makes it 14 to seven. A heck of a play there defensively, getting the interception, navigating his way into the end zone for the touchdown. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. Taken in at the three. And able to get this out to the 25. Keep playing hard. Out comes this field general once more leading his offense back onto the field. He's got the lead here in the second quarter. He's thrown the touchdown, but also an interception. As a quarterback, does that interception, even though you're playing while well, your team's got the lead, does that always stick in the back of your mind a little bit? For the best ones, it just upsets them that they did that because they don't think there should be any blemishes on their record. They think that they're way better than that. So your confidence gets tested a little bit. Being able to go back out there, maybe throw another touchdown, That'll tamp that down in a big way. Yeah, because he's looked pretty good to this point. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. Not a lot of running room there. Not a place to make a cut and kind of exit out because they had everything bottled up. Looked to me like the linemen were taking on their blocks really well and giving up no creases. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. Now a tenth carry. Here's Williams. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play, and it's going to bring up a third down. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. 
The Dolphins on third down. Two for five to this point. This is third and seven. Here's Moreno. Throwing the out route incomplete. It's Clayton. Two yards is all they'll get on the completion. It's fourth down. Partner, I think that completion takes the definition of dink and dunk to a different level, doesn't it? It does, and the defense was right there, kind of played into their hands. Here's Michael Pilardi now, as he's on to punt for Miami. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. Now Sanders. We'll call that a punt of 38 yards officially, and that will come the offense as they take over. And San Francisco gets set to go here. They had a great drive going last time. They were moving the ball, and then all of a sudden it just stalled out. So we'll see what they can do here, Charles. And it's always easy to second guess when you don't get it on a fourth down try. But they had to like the feeling that they had going on offense. They want to continue to see if they can capture that again on this drive and maybe get in the same position. Yeah, and that's, I mean, like I said, they were moving the football. It's not like they went four and out, so I don't think it's a, a deal where the offense doesn't have confidence. No, I agree with you totally on that one. If, that, if anything, they may have gained more confidence. Okay, they stopped us once. That's all right. Let's keep moving it. Make them do it again. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. Although his reputation as a speedy runner precedes him, it's always fun to watch him work. It is eye-opening, isn't it? Because when you see him get the ball and just go, in addition to that speed, it helps out his blockers. They don't have to hold blocks for long because he's just going to speed right past them. We've hit the two-minute mark of the second quarter, 14-7. to seven. Mind you, in just a couple of minutes, we'll get you to Orlando and our good friend Jonathan Coachman. Coach will run through some of the numbers and the next-gen stats from this first half of football so far. But now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. To this point, I've been impressed with the work defensively. They have not allowed a lot of receivers to run free. And there's another example, another incompletion. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Shotgun, here's Montana. And that falls to the ground, incomplete. A nice job of bodying him up defensively. And now it brings up third down. Feels like they're getting caught in between here because they had incompletions on first and second down. Now you gotta worry a little bit about the clock because you prefer not to give them another shot here in the first half. But if you don't pick up the first down, guess what? You're likely going to have to. knocked away and incomplete. One thing that offensive guys stress when they throw the deep ball, you're just counting on your receiver to find it, adjust before the defensive back can get his head around. In this case, though, the DB matched it move for move and knocked it away. Here comes the 49ers punter now as he'll come on to kick this one away. And a great job on special teams to down it as this will be marked down inside the five-yard line. That is how you flip field position. That's an absolute bomb of a punt. Downs it inside the five-yard line. Absolutely ideal. From that position, you're hoping to get it down inside the 15, inside the five. Superb. They begin the drive with Williams. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. And that's frustrating for a defense because they've got them pinned down deep. And on the first play, they give up a run that keeps an offense on schedule. Yeah, because three to four yards, that's all you're looking for right there, right? That's absolutely perfect, really, as a play call. You get three to four yards on first down. That's what they talk about to us all the time, about being ahead of the chains or on target, ahead of schedule. 
They were after that run. And he'll get it up a little shy of the 15. They'll spot him down at the 14-yard line. On, baby. Now go. the Dolphins going to burn the first of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. Here's a first and 10 at the 14-yard line. Now Marino to throw it. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. The Dolphins going to take their second timeout as they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in half number one. Marino will look to throw on first. He sets to fire deep, and it is incomplete. Good positioning there downfield to break that one up. Well, partner, they're not content to run this one out as we head towards the half, trying to hit a big chunk play right there and add to their score. Yeah, this is a confident group. At the very least, they're thinking field goal. Yeah, and I don't blame them one bit. I don't think you sit on the ball going into the half when you have a chance to put some more points on the board. Throwing again on second and 10. Marino. And the Niners get there and bring him down. The 49ers now going to use the first of their timeouts as they stop it here with just under 40 ticks to go in this first half. And some secondary help here for the defense and the nickel on third and long. They'll hand it off now, Williams. And they're gonna get him down well short of the first as he can only get this to the 30. Now San Francisco gonna call their second timeout as the clock will stop with 33 seconds to go in the first half. Here's Michael Pilardi now as he's on to punt for the fourth time tonight. That'll go as a punt of 42, go, seven on the return. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. And the Niners ready to go on offense for the final time of this first half. And with 25 seconds to go, we'll, we'll see how they want to play this. Just 25 seconds to go in the half now as they've got it first and 10. Here's Montana to throw. And he will be hit from behind and run over. Wow. It looks like a loss of right around 11 there on first down to set him back on second. That's what I'm talking about, defense. So we've reached halftime here, and it's the visiting Dolphins taking a lead to the locker room as we send you cross-country to Orlando. Jonathan Coachman is there and has our EA Sports halftime report. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome, everybody, to our abbreviated version of the EA Sports halftime report. First, though, time for a check of the next-gen stats from that first half for Miami. And they've had some success on the ground. And with the lead going into the second half, they'll no doubt be looking to keep it going. Meanwhile, for the Niners, there's a look at what they were able to do throwing the football. And they'll need to get things in gear as they trail here at the break. Okay, Coach, yeah, adjustments likely going to play a big role in this third quarter in what's been a tight contest so far.
The Dolphins in front, and they'll be in possession of the football first as the second half gets started. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And tackled at the 21-yard line, so a net negative there of four yards. Out comes the Dolphins now. They'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. And both of these defenses have been stifling these last few drives offensively. Just not able to get anything going, so what needs to change? I think a lot of the guys will go back and review, so to speak, because everyone has someone assigned to. How did each play work? Okay, what did, what did we use that kind of worked for us during this game? Try and get back to some of those plays, as well as the possibility of showing something you haven't shown already in this game and trying to change things up. We'll see if they take the advice of Mr. Davis. And they give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. Well, the end of all that hitting and hollering, it was a four-yard run, so the offense is going to go back to help feel pretty good about themselves. Defensively, you have to feel okay because you didn't let it turn into a bigger run, but the goal, shut it down for two yards or less. That's when you start to feel good about yourselves. From the 25 on second down, Marino. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. I think it all came together there. In-breaking route, drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. Now a first down carry, it's Williams. And he's gonna take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that, second down. But you know that old expression, it's not my night? It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. Second and six. No, scratch that. Second and seven. Again, it's Williams. And he'll take this one up close to about the 45. They have three yards on first down, just one yard there. But now they're in a spot that every team tells us when we have our production means they don't want to be in third and long. And that's because those back-to-back -back running plays just didn't accomplish a whole lot. A couple of extra defensive bats in the ball game here on third and six. Now Marino. Looking left side, it's complete, he's got it. And this will move the chains again as the tackle's gonna be made at the 49ers 34 yard line. With the kind of game he's had so far, you had to know that on third down, that they would be looking his way and they did for big yardage and a first down. I think the defense fell asleep at the switch on that one. I would have doubled him, tripled him, anything to keep the ball out of his hands. So from inside Niner territory now, this is first and 10 at the 34. The busy night continues for Williams. And he works it to the 30-yard line here, right at the 30. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. They run it again with Williams. Give him four on the carry, and it'll make this a third and about two. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they are playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time, and making it work. Trying to keep the drive going here. This is play number seven on third and two. Here's Marino to throw. And get this to his tight end, Gesicki. And this will move the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the 49ers' 13-yard line. When you get a big tight end like this, sometimes it takes more than one man to bring him down. Oftentimes, your best bet, just jump on and hold on and wait for your teammates to arrive to help get him on the ground. Here we go. 
From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. And a quick throw here, that's complete. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. And Brandon, as you know, sometimes it's a lot tougher to run with these tight ends nowadays in the NFL. They're just bigger wide receivers. He lined up on the left side of the formation, ran a drag route across the field, and tried to work his way open. He was able to make the catch, but the defenders were there. Couldn't do a whole lot with it afterwards. Carter with it. And he's maybe going to get this back to the four, but that's about all. No gain on the play, and now they're faced with a third and one. Taken down, but he does have first down yardage. And in a lot of ways, that catch is expected. Red zone presence, and that one was realized there. You've got to find your tight end in that situation. So another third down conversion, and now they've got a first and goal. Williams will take this in for the Dolphin touchdown. So it was the passing game that got him down here, but closer to the goal line, it's the running game that gets him home. Certainly appears that they lulled the defense into thinking that the passing game was going to be it the entire drive. Nice change up there going to the running game to get him over the goal line. Out comes the kicking team here for the extra point. It's good, and it is now 21 to 7. So that drive, 12 plays in length, and it winds up in six points for the Dolphins. After the TD, here's Carpenter on to kick it away. And this fielded right at the goal line. And he'll take it a yard or so past the 20, call it the 21. Here's a look at the 49ers offense as they make their way out for their first possession of the second half. And their deficit a little wider than it was at halftime. Does that touchdown a minute ago change the thinking here at all? I think it does, at least a little bit, because now urgency has to start setting in. You can't go out there and go three and out and run the risk of falling behind substantially, but you have to do it without pressing, because pressing, that'll lead you into bigger errors. Play action. It's Montana. He finds his man complete. It's Rice. And he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. I do have to admit, I like it when it all comes together. When the top part, catching the football, right? Whether you're catching it with your hands or cradling it, comes together with the legs. In this case, the feet did a little toe tap to stay in bounds and complete the catch. And a great job by our crew on the camera shot. Love when you see the grass or on the field turf, those rubber pellets flying up. Great catch. Now a throw here, hold in. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. Give him nine there on the first down completion. And just a yard to go here on second down. Now a handoff for Gore, and he'll get it down here to the 43. 
Second and one, and people want to run the football. This is where every back in the league is supposed to do exactly what we just saw there. Pick up the first down. On first down, Montana. This one into the hands of Kittle, the tight end. Yeah, he'll be out just a yard or two shy of the 30. It's taken a while for this offense to get going. A little creaky at the start, but they're oiled up now. A nice throw there, and they're really putting together a good drive. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. To throw is Montana. The same target, same result. It's Kittle. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. 12 yards on back-to-back -back plays there, and that's another first down. And this has been a nice answer to the touchdown drive against them a few minutes ago because they've come out and reestablished the tempo. A nice throw there, and they're putting together a very strong drive as a response. On first down. It's Craig. Oh, good move. And good downhill running. He's got six yards down to the 13. Not too many offenses want to turn down long drives, but when you're down what they are, they've got to pay it off with some points. Second and four. Back to the ground, this time with Gore. Gore fighting him off. And the 49ers are going to have a first and goal. It's some Let's good go. running there. Gets him down to about the two-yard line. Knocking on the door. Despite the score, despite the deficit, no quitting this guy. He's running angry, running through arm tackles. He wants to change what that scoreboard is saying. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. Now Montana. That is caught by the tight end, Kittle. Touchdown, 49ers. Two yards on the touchdown there, and the 49ers are back within a score. You get down near the goal line, this is where having a sure-handed tight end becomes a luxury, and it pays off big time, especially when the defense sells out against the run. He finds himself open for an easy touchdown. Pinheiro now to add the extra point. It's up and good. This becomes a 21-14 ball game now. So an eight-play drive covering 80 yards. And the end result for the 49ers, a touchdown. Here is Wisnowski to boot it away following the touchdown. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And he'll be brought down shy of the 20, so the decision to bring it out of the end zone, not a good one. Let's go! Here comes a field general leading his offense back out there for the next possession. How do you think he personally is evaluating his game so far? He was pretty good in the first half, been good so far here in the third quarter. He's got to like it, right? Not looking for the dramatics here. Not trying to set the world on fire in terms of stats. It's almost like you're driving. Hands at 10 and 2, alert for anything <laughs> out there, watching for trouble on the road, and making sure you get the team home. The bus driver. See if we can drive the bus here again on this drive. Now carry number 20 of the game. Here's Williams. Stopped at the 24-yard line after a gain of five. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here, and if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, 
get a couple of first downs, run some plays, run some clock, allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up the score. From the 24, Marino, and he hits on the slant route to Marshall. And they're able to get this one across the 35. That was a nicely run slant route. And what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. First down, Marino. Going back to Marshall, he's got him again. And they bring him to the ground just shy of midfield. I'll tell you what, a lot of those mid-range throws have been available because sometimes teams get too concerned about the deep ball and they leave too much space in front of them. And these guys have been taking advantage so far. They'll run on first down. Williams, and they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. 86 yards for him on the ground now. He has been a tough man to bring down all night. They're making it look easy out there. Another first down. So, so far in this drive, let me do this little bit of math here. Four plays, three first downs. That's a pretty good recipe for success. So from inside Niner territory now, this is first and 10 at the 39-yard line. Play fake, here's Marino. Throw left side here, complete to the tight end, Gesicki. So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there, freezing the defense just enough to bring the tight end free downfield for the completion. They go play action now. Marino. Oh, not sure he saw the linebacker there. As that's batted down and incomplete. Receiver coaches preach to their guys all the time. Separation. That's what's going to make the play successful. That time there was very little. And I think they were actually fortunate that it was only knocked away and not intercepted. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. Marino will throw. That is caught. It's Williams. And he doesn't quite make it, taking it with an eyelash. Dropped at the one. A big play there for the Dolphins. Oh, I think we all understand his disappointment. He didn't quite get to the end zone, and you know it's just got to be tough to see a yard line underneath you after a play like that. Still, all in all, a huge play, and now they're set up first and goal at the one. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And they will stop him after a fairly minimal pickup. Only a yard on the pickup there. Second and goal. And not much on that run, Charles. No, that's exactly the way to execute a run blitz there. They guessed correctly that they would move the ball on the ground, honed in on it, and stopped him. Marked that down for a win in the defense's column. They'll run it with Williams. And he will take it in for a Dolphins touchdown. A great play there. His second touchdown of the night. And the Dolphins add on to their lead. That seemed pretty ideal there for the offense, Charles. You take a little bit of time off the clock here in the third quarter, decent length drive, and you pad your lead as well at the end of it. And what it does is let you feel like you're in control of this game even more so than a two-touchdown lead, right? Because you have taken that time off, as you noted, which means they couldn't get you off the field. You ran your playbook the way you wanted to, and you gave your defense some rest. What a big-time drive in that situation. Point after, right down the middle. And the lead now up to 14. A good drive that time as they go nine plays in all. And it ends with a touchdown for the Dolphins. Now 
After the TD, here's Carpenter on to kick it away. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. As San Francisco's offense returns to the field. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that. They had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? I would think that they would because if they were confident enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Yeah, because the secondary, they really look clueless. And that was amazing because that drive went and went, no adjustments and no big plays by the defense to knock the ball away. Play fake, now here's Montana. Blitz coming and down he goes. They'll wind up losing eight on the sack there, and it's second down. One quarter remains here on a Sunday night. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now here in Santa Clara. It's 49er football, but some ground to cover. They find themselves behind as we hit the fourth and final quarter. Got to imagine the pass rush will be equally intense here on second down following the sack. It's second and 18. They will look to throw Montana. And his throw is incomplete. You definitely would like to have hit on that one because now you've got a third and long showing up and you just know defense is going to be getting after it. They are pinning their ears back and they are coming. The Niners on third down. They've converted three times in eight chances. This will be a tough third and 18. Montana. Going up top. And unable to connect. Incomplete. Now give them credit. They took their shot, but it's going to bring up fourth down. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball, and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead, fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. Here comes the 49ers punter now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. Thirty-nine yards on the punt, give him just one this. yard on the return. And possession will switch hands first and ten. The Miami's offense set and ready to go. Now there are two scores on the plus side. Still time here in this fourth quarter, but maybe you start thinking about playing keep away? Yeah, I think here's the situation. You're not thinking touchdowns anymore. You're just thinking first downs to keep up with your theme there, playing keep away. First downs, they can't touch the ball. Good starting field position for them as they come up first and 10 at their own 44. To throw is Marino. For Marshall, that's complete. A gain of six there on first. Your trip is here, baby. Your trip is here. Another nice pick up through the air, and I think a lot of people might expect them to run the ball in this situation, Brandon, but with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swings, slants, quick outs, things that they consider safe. From midfield now, Marino over the middle. He's got Gasicki, the big 6'5 tight end. And he gets on, this man. inside the 35-yard line. Well, normally you might say start running the football. You've got the lead here in the fourth quarter, but the way that they've passed it with such success, I don't know, maybe keep throwing it. Yeah, I think you brought up something that goes against conventional wisdom, right? In this stage of the game, you would think you would switch to a running attack, but you're exactly right. They've thrown it so well throughout the game. And trusting this quarterback, I think he continued to do so. On first and 10, it's Marino. That's to Marshall on a quick slant. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second you and two. <laughs> Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game. And it can be if that pass is completed. Because you hit a guy on the run like that, 
you often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. Second and two. Now a handoff. Here's Williams. And he's able to get it to the edge of the red zone at the 20-yard line. No doubt those are the types of carries they're looking for here, Charles. The lead in the fourth quarter. This is when coaches that have a reliable running game, they breathe a little easier on the sideline. Yeah, they love the idea that they can take the air out of the football at this point of the game. That means they're really counting on that offensive line, counting on the runners, taking care of the football. Because you're going to tell your quarterback, hey, no time to be a hero. We're not going to throw it here. Just eat up that clock. And if you have the ball, they can't score. Now a man open down the middle of the field. Three yards the gain there, second down. Now Marino to throw it. His throw caught at about the five. And the Dolphins are going to have Kick first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. These guys are running offense like you drive. The pedal is down. <laughs> Stomp down. How about that? Back-to-back -back completions. They are rolling. So much for being conservative and running that football. They've got three tight ends here on first and goal to add some extra mass. They'll try and run. This is Williams. And he is in. Touchdown, Miami. A great effort there. Taking it in. And the Dolphins have put this one to bed here in the fourth quarter. Everybody in the stadium knew what they were going to do right there, CD. Three tight ends on the field, all that extra bulk, and they run it in. And you saw where that one went, right? You run it over your best blocker. I can just see the head coach right now. I want to run this one over the big boy. And they got it done. Extra point right down the middle. And the lead now to three touchdowns at 21. After the TD, here's Carpenter on to kick it away. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And he will be brought down here inside on, the 20. Good coverage as he's dropped at the 17. The 49ers ready to set up shop again offensively. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. Here's Montana to throw. And yeah, that one drops down incomplete. Good coverage there, forced the ball free and it's second down. Well, the trials and tribulations of being a quarterback in this league, it's tough. It's got to be wearing on him out there. Well, he has been sacked a number of times. He had an interception, so I'm going to give him a skosh of credit for hanging in there and trying to make something happen, despite the amount of pressure he's been under this entire game. To throw once more on second and 10. Montana throwing the out route incomplete. That's Rice. And able to get this across the 20 before going out of bounds. 
They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. They're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. Now the throw on third down, knocked away and incomplete. At this point, down big, you'd have to imagine this defense, they're just going to sit back, blanket the field as best they can. Yeah, this is actually the easy part of the game for them because, just as you noted, they can sit back, keep everything in front of them. But they've blanketed the field the entire game using a variety of coverages. Going to try to throw for it with Montana. Crabtree with it, over the middle. And he gets this one just Let's shy go. of the 40. Let's They'll Let's mark go. him down at the 39. Well, this game was decided a while ago, and that completion there, it's going to artificially inflate his passing numbers. So right now, the only one really applauding probably his agent as he thinks about angling for a new contract. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Back to throw again. That'll be caught by Rice. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. Well, I can put my defensive cap on right now, and I know they're saying don't give up any big plays now. They've controlled this game throughout, and all they want to do is see it through to the end. I think they let their guard down a little bit with that last completion. Sometimes when you're trying not to give up bigger plays, you don't react as fast as you should on other throws. So now first and 10 as they've crossed into Miami territory at the 41. They'll look to throw again. The tight end Kittle has it on the left side. Three yards the gain there, second down. You got the big lead defensively, willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. Second and seven. Again, he'll drop to throw. He finds his man complete. It's Owens. And he's got another first down as he's brought down at the Dolphins' 25-yard line. Had to put that ball in there with a little extra zip, but he put it right where it needed to be. Yeah, and that little extra pace that he had on the pass, that required a little extra concentration for him, didn't it? Ball can get on you pretty quick in that manner, and he handled it well and picked up the first down. Joe Montana here going to the air on first down. And that is incomplete. Oh, the coverage a little too good there, and it's second down. Uh, defensively, you look at the numbers. Another incomplete pass that we just saw, and they're under 200 yards passing for the game, so they've done their job on that side of the ball. Yeah, recently I was actually working a game where a quarterback had a streak of five straight games without a 200-yard game, and that was a big talk both in his town and amongst his team. How do we get the passing game going so Big credit to them. And across the chalk, into the end zone. It's a 49er touchdown. 25 yards for the touchdown. And the Niners have got it back to a two-score game here in the fourth. So a little bit of a letdown there defensively. I mean, look, you're still two scores to the good, CD, but things may be a little more uncomfortable than they had hoped. Yeah, if you kept them out of the end zone there, this game's over. You've locked the door on them. Instead, it's still open a little bit, and they've got a puncher's chance. Extra point splits the uprights, and the lead will be cut down to 14. So that drive consumes nine plays all told, and it's polished off by a touchdown for San Francisco. Here is Wisnowski to boot it away following the touchdown. 
From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And the decision to come out of the end zone is going to cost him five yards as he's taken down right at the 20. The Dolphins about set to go to work on offense. This game was really a tussle, seemed like just a moment ago, and now they've got the momentum. A couple of scores on their last pair of drives and a two-score lead. I think here now you just you go conservative, right? Run the football, work the clock. You know, I usually agree with you, but I'm going after them right here. I really? want to put this bad boy away. I wouldn't be afraid to throw it. They've got all the confidence, all the momentum on their side. Go ahead and take your dagger shots and try and finish this one off. I disagree vehemently. <laughs> I say, run the football, you've got the lead. Well, let's watch it and find out who's right. Here's a throw to his running back. It's complete. And he'll get this up past the 25 before he's out of bounds. A gain of eight there on the play, and it'll be a second down. They go play action with Marino. He'll get this to his running back, Edmonds. And he gets this one just shy of the 40, down at the 39. Well, that should be a reminder defensively, and I think it's a reminder to myself because you just can't sell out to stop the run. There's still enough time that this offense can move the football through the air, even on first and second downs, and they obviously picked the right spot to throw the ball there. On first down, Williams. And he'll be stopped right at midfield. Here we go. 103 Here we go. yards on the ground for him now as he has gotten better, really, as the night's gone on. And carries like that, that's how they're going to continue to salt this thing away here, Charles, in the fourth quarter. Yeah, how about that? A new set of downs. Clock continues to move. No better way to close out a game than to tap those mastodons you have up front and say, guys, keep pounding them. Let's keep the ball, keep their offense on the sidelines, and let's close this one out. They stick to the ground game on first down. It's Williams. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. I'm sure that that's going to be the formula. Just keep the ball on the ground. Keep that clock moving. And when you have the lead this late in the game, above all, stay in bounds. Yes, take care of the football. Yes, gain yardage. But stay in bounds and let that clock tick. From just shy of midfield, Marino. He finds his man complete. That's Clayton. Touchdown, Dolphins. A big play there. 48 yards. And the Dolphins are able to grow their lead. For as big and strong as some of these guys are, especially when you see them in full pads, it is sometimes hard to appreciate how truly fast they can move. That was incredible. And I'll tell you what, what a bird's eye view I've got here because... That was absolutely something else to watch. Not a lot of wiggle in that. That was catch it and go, and he used those wheels of his to absolute devastating effect. Point after, right down the middle. And the lead now to three touchdowns at 21. So that drive spanned five plays, and it winds up in six points for the Dolphins. After the TD, here's Carpenter on to kick it away. Taken at the goal line. And he'll be stopped up at the 25. There we go. And our focus now shifts to Frank Gore. And as the numbers show, he really wasn't in the mix at the beginning, but they've got him in the rotation now, and it's proved a good move. And that's what happens when you're a good player. There's a lot more attention drawn to you. And it's obvious that they had him in their game plan on defense, not letting him get off to a good start. But he's found a way so far here in the second half. Hey, 
The San Francisco offense ready to start their next drive. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. Decent start to the drive, but let's face it, they need a lot of things to go right in a short amount of time down three scores. Yeah, they're going to run their two-minute offense here in this game, but this is for future games. Can they get better and be ready for the next time, hopefully with a chance to win? One play has him up past the 40 already, and another first and 10. And here's a handoff out of the gun. And he's brought down, but not before a really nice stiff arm to create a little space. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. A good run, got seven on first. Here's second and three. Now Montana. His throw incomplete. A lot of times it's that first read that you have. Maybe you get it in pre-snap and he locked in on his target, but he was covered quite well and that one's incomplete. The Niners on third down. They're hitting at just 30%, three for 10. This time it's third and three. To throw is Montana. Over the middle, that's caught by Owens. And he is going to have a 49ers first down, and he was able to get it by plenty. A gain of eight on third and three. Would it be safe to say that as precise as routes are supposed to be run in the NFL, maybe they're not quite as precise in college ball? That's accurate, yeah. And I think we saw a college route in the NFL there. Just find the soft spot, find the dead zone, and find the first down. And that's what he just did. First and 10 for Montana and company. Complete to the tight end, Kittle, over the middle of the field. And he's going to get this one down to the one. edge of the red zone. And with that last play, he's now up over that 300-yard mark. And in today's NFL, it almost feels routine. And I hate that when you talk about a 300-yard passing game. To me, 300 yards still signifies excellence, and he's achieved that in this performance. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. He finds his man complete. That's Rice. Seven yards to pick up there. Now on second down, this is Gore. And once again, the Dolphin defense holds firm as they'll stop him behind the line of scrimmage. He'll lose a yard on the play, so now they need three yards on third down. There's no question that coming into this game, this defense is pretty vocal about his desire to take this running back out of his game. And all that pregame wolfing has turned into results. Seventh play of the drive now as they come up on a third and three. They'll stick to the ground game with Gore. And he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. So it's 49er football here as we get you reset. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. And yes, everyone, that was the fullback carrying the football. I know it's a dying breed. It's a dying position for a lot of people, but I still think it's valuable and important, especially one who can carry the ball. And you need short yardage. What makes sense? Go to a big body, let him plow forward just like he did there. It's still a big man's game. 
Operating out of the gun. Here's Montana. And he hauls it in in the end zone. Touchdown, San Francisco. Come on, now. A great play there. There to make the grab. And the 49ers get a score closer. I'm not sure win-win is the proper term here, but it certainly felt like it. They got the touchdown they needed, but if I'm on the defensive side of the ball, okay, you got the touchdown, but it sure took you a long time. Yeah, because offensively, though, you're probably hoping for a one-to-five play drive. That one ate up a little more time than they were hoping. You're exactly right, and if you have that one-to-five play drive, you actually build up momentum and even more hope. When they had to slog their way downfield, they got the touchdown, but it's almost like, ah. Yeah. Yeah, you know. It doesn't you kinda, feel right. Exactly. <laughs> Extra point right down the middle. And the lead will be cut down to 14. Two scores down, three timeouts left. Still a chance if they can somehow get this one back. And the Dolphins are going to recover. They knew they needed a miracle. They had to have that onside kick. They didn't get it. Well, as we knew, even before they put the, the toe to the leather on that one, their chances of getting that done, slim and none. And I do believe we saw Slim just leave the door, didn't we? We did indeed. I think we're down to none. Then the Dolphins getting set to go here. And a few kneel downs should just about do it. Now defensively, they do have all three timeouts, but very little reason to use them at this point. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. And he's corralled, but not before we getting it inside win. the 35. The 49ers now going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll get it with just under 90 seconds remaining. They're not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. Now a timeout called for by the defense as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. Out of the pistol, here's Williams. And they'll bring him down at the 18-yard line. Well, now the Niners gonna signal for their third and final timeout. And they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. Victory very likely now for the Dolphins as they take a knee here. Marino's going to take a knee, and that should just about do it. Yeah, it's fun to kneel down in front of your home crowd, but when you go on the road, that band of brothers attitude, right? Just us against the world and get it done. <laughs> How happy are they? I remember a coach at a previous stop telling me, you get a win on the road, doesn't matter the opponent, get out of there like you stole something. And they, <laughs> they did in this one. <laughs> well, 
Well, Charles, it's one thing to win. It's another thing to win and put up the amount of points that they did. Boy, were they clicking on offense. They can't help but feel great about themselves, can they? I mean, what a game to put up that number of points, continually feeling like they're moving the ball and things are working and clicking. They think that they can bottle this and carry it with them. And as an offensive coordinator, you just don't think you can do anything wrong. Whatever you call, run, pass, it's all going to work. That's called being in the zone.